By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have another nice Duelist podcast for you. This is the second one in this brand new series right here on Timmy Talks, where I share with you my favorite articles from the Duelist magazine. And today I will be reading out an article from the second edition of the Duelist. If you want to check out the previous podcast, you can click on the info card that's appearing right now. And that was a podcast about the circles of protection. And today I actually have another article written by Chris Page. And this time it is about how fitting the protocol sorcerer. So sit back, relax, make sure you have a nice drink, maybe something to snack. And then we'll dive into the world of the protocol sorcerer. Protocol Sorcerer by Chris Page How much do you really know about the Protocol Sorcerer? It looks fairly simple, a 1-1 creature that can do 1 point of damage to any target. If you get it out and use it for the next 20 turns, your opponent is finished. And that's more, it's special, it's a poke and it can't be blocked. But if poking your opponent is all you use it for, you've been ignoring one of the most versatile and devious cards in Magic. Any one card around which whole games sometimes revolve has to be worth another look. That second look shows us that the principal point behind the card's poke is using it against creatures, not your opponent. With one sorcerer, you can kill Lanawar Elves, Mesa Pegasi, Savannah Lines, Phantasmal Forces, the Argivian Archaeologist, Ali from Cairo, or any other obnoxious creature with a toughness of one. This single card devalues every other one toughness creature, from the lowly Merfolk of the Pearl Trident all the way up to the mighty Royal Assassin. But the fun doesn't stop with just the small creatures. Get two sorcerers out and kill Pearl Unicorns and Hypnotic Spectres. Get more out and you suddenly have an artillery line wreaking havoc among your opponent's creatures. It's a truly satisfying experience to blast away your opponent's Barkrath or Fire Elemental. Trust me on this one. Another alternative is to jam up what you can't kill by playing the Meek Stone, a card which prevents creatures of power 3 or more from untapping, and then slaughtering all little creatures of your opponent that are unaffected. Or, you can make your opponent's creatures small enough to kill with the Prodigal Sorcerer. While Sorcerer's Queen tap to make a creature O2 until end of turn, and Weakness have their amusing value, a much meaner trick is to use either Living Lands or Cormus Bell, which turn all lands of a specific type into 1-1 creatures. This strategy is particularly nasty if you can use a magical hack to select a type of land which become vulnerable. You don't have to kill the creature for good. Simply do one point of damage to the skeletons before an attack, tapping it and making it unable to block. Now your opponent doesn't have anything to stop the fire-breathing crawworm rushing her way and is facing a sudden and gruesome death. But why stop your opponent's creatures? You can use the Protocol Sorcerer against any target, including your own creatures. So if your Merfolk has two Wanderlusts and a Paralyze on it, you can summon your Sorcerer to stop the two points of damage per turn. If you've got Sorcerers out, you can have fun with other bizarre creatures that you want to kill like the Rook Egg, an O3 creature that gives you a 4-4 flying token creature if it dies. Or if your opponent is trying to steal a 1-toughness creature, you can kill it as he casts Control Magic. And Protocol Sorcerer is one of the very few creatures in the game that can actually kill itself. Quite useful as it happens to be the card being affected by the Control Magic. But the classic trick for damaging your own creatures involves the Fungasaur. This is a 2-2 creature that gets a permanent plus 1 plus 1 every time it is damaged. Don't get carried away though. While using your Protocol Sorcerer to get a double digit creature is a great psychological weapon. It actually becomes an ineffective strategy after you reach about 7-7 seven, seven or so, where it kills whatever it blocks. At that point your opponent is going to be dead in 3 turns anyway. So you might as well demolish the cheap creatures he's throwing in your Fungasaur's way to stave off the inevitable. And if you do manage to nurse your Fungasaur into a 1919 Fiend, you'll be really set back if it gets unsummoned or terrored, having wasted 11 to 12 points of damage that you could have dealt directly to your opponent. 
there are a few creatures that are especially tough to kill. For instance, try coping with Samite Healer. If your sorcerer comes out first, this isn't a problem, since the healer can tap to prevent the point of damage the turn it comes out. But what if the healer comes out first? It takes patience, but it's a trick well worth learning. Wait for your opponent to finish her untap phase, then tap the sorcerer to do one point of damage to the healer. Your opponent will tap the healer to prevent it. If for some reason your opponent doesn't, consider yourself lucky and stop reading here. At the beginning of your turn, strike with a death blow. Your sorcerer untaps, letting you do a point of damage to the now tapped healer, killing it. This works against any creature that can be protected once. A frozen shade with only one untapped swamp, a lay druid guarded by a healer with holy armor, an obnoxious Wailuli wolf, or a creature that is continually uh, being saved by the amulet of Krug. And if there are multiple healers, you need more protocol sorcerers, though not an equal number, since a player with the protocol sorcerers has the advantage. For instance, if your opponent has three healers, you only need two sorcerers to pull off the above trick. The specific formula is to count the number of enemy healers on the board, add one, divide it by two, and round up. This is the number of protocol sorcerers needed to beat them back. The Nettling Imp isn't the easiest card to cope with either. Though, once again, the Protocol Sorcerer has the upper hand. If your Sorcerer gets out first, the Imp dies and the Sorcerer lives. If the Imp is out first, they both die, since the Imp can't use its power until the Sorcerer is able to tap to do its point of damage. The hardest one toughness creature for the Protocol Sorcerer to kill is... the Protocol Sorcerer. Blue against blue games can get quite nasty, since whoever get the first Sorcerer out can then kill any other protocol sorcerer that are stuck in, in, in the other player's hand. So whoever gets to put the sorcerer down first has a strong lead. Since it usually comes out on the third turn, whoever gets to go first has the upper hand, and it's up to the other player to regain dominance. You can only count on going first half the time, unless you want to invest in weighted coins, loaded dice, and angry opponents. So you need insurance that your protocol sorcerer are the ones in control of the board. There are any number of ways to do this, typically centered around either protecting your protocol sorcerer or blasting the opponent's protocol sorcerer out of existence. The protection route offers you a number of less than optimal options. Holy and unholy strength as well as holy armor are perfect for getting around a one point defense. But if you have multiple protocol sorcerers out, this starts to be a card intensive strategy that can really hurt if your opponent casts Tranquility. Besides, protecting your sorcerer costs you two cards for one creature, effectively halving the number of creatures you have out. This is what makes Instal Energy on a Protocol Sorcerer a bad combination. It's two cards you could have put two Protocol Sorcerers in your deck and be doing the same of damage. Except that with Instal Energy, your opponent only needs one terror to cure the problem when he could have needed two. Other methods, such as healers or wards, suffer from the same problem. One-shot cards are even worse, like Guardian Angel and Death Ward, since you need another one each time your sorcerer takes damage. Castle also fills miserably, since it only helps untapped creatures. There is one neat card that does protect all your sorcerers with just one card, the Jade Monolith. It also protects your creatures from your opponent's sorcerer, but that's another point. This artifact lets you redirect those one point damage strikes, strikes against your sorcerer to yourself, meaning that your opponent can only kill your sorcerers by killing you. The process of elimination is the other real option. Any damage spells will, suff will suffice to kill a sorcerer and occasionally other things will let you turn the tables. Unsummon, for example, which gives you a second chance to put down your own protocol sorcerer. Some methods are better than others. Psionic Blast is a good blue spell. Fireball and Pestilence are excellent options since they can kill multiple protocol sorcerers with just one card. But the best method is to use either Rod of Ruin, Orcish Artillery or Pirate Ship, since any of them let you maintain protocol sorcerer dominance. After all, they are cards that cannot be killed by the Protocol Sorcerer, yet kill them in return. If both players use this trick, the Protocol Sorcerer battle escalates to a much higher level. 
There are also less powerful but more embarrassing and obnoxious ways to hold a protocol sorcerer. My personal favorite happens to be two paralyzes, a wholly armored Samite healer, one or two sirens calls, or a smoke or other amusing ways to abuse and torture people using too many sorcerers. But the real strategy in using protocol sorcerer comes once you've killed off all the creatures you can with direct damage. If you're attacking and suddenly you have two untapped protocol sorcerers ready to add two points of damage to any one of your opponent's blocking creatures, things become scary for them. Your opponent may just let her unicorn through rather than blocking it with her water elemental. Since if she does, you could tap your two sorcerers for two extra points of damage, causing you to lose a 2-2 creature and your opponent to lose a 5-4 creature. Having one or two points of damage to put wherever you want after blocking has been chosen suddenly makes combat a lot more difficult and uncertain for your opponent. Your opponent is going to have to allow for a much larger margin of error, meaning that you will either kill more of your opponent's creatures or be attacked by fewer. If you do this enough, you might even gain a significant psychological advantage. Your opponent may start making mistakes or not attack at all, giving you time to get more protocol sorcerers into play. This is where the use of the protocol sorcerer becomes the most challenging and the most profitable. When you're down to just doing points of damage to your opponent and there's no significant combat going on, the best strategy is to leave your protocol sorcerers untapped until the end of your opponent's turn. That way, if she puts down any 1-1 creatures, you can immediately fry them. And at worst, at the end of your opponent's turn, you can still do your point of damage. Have you developed a new appreciation for this card yet? Before you stack your deck with them, however, you should keep in mind that a protocol sorcerer's usefulness is limited in certain situations. In tournament play, for example, the sorcerer has its drawbacks. While the card is powerful, it shares the great weakness of every one toughness creature. It is easy to kill. What makes it even worse is that there are certain single cards that will kill multiple protocol sorcerers which in a tournament situation usually puts you at direct dis card disadvantage. A better option for, for a tournament deck is Rod of Ruin, which typically requires one card all by itself to destroy it. But there's good reason for all these drawbacks. The Protocol Sorcerer is the target of so many other spells because it is such a powerful and versatile card. And until you start playing cutthroat games, it makes a very nice addition to almost any deck that includes blue. And that was it. We have read it all. Well, you've listened to it all and I've read it all to you. Uh, this was the entire article about the Protocol Sorcerer. Very interesting parts. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you still think that this information is relevant. I do believe a few things are, well, I wouldn't say outdated, but we have a different view on it these days. Um, of course, there was a lot of talk about the Samite Healer. I really never see a Samite Healer uh, unless we're really just playing... I know I've got I've got this old sleeveless revised deck that has some semi healers, but other than that, I never really play with it or look or look at it or see it. I do think it's a great card, but I mean, it, it has little little value, you know, in the game in today's game. And um, another thing that I noticed was that section where he said, you know, an instal energy is not really worth it because you might as well play a second protocol sorcerer. You know, I agree that when you're playing enchant creatures there's always a risk of getting two for one. I, I agree with that, but I don't agree with the idea of, you know, if you put an instant energy on a protocol sorcerer, you might as well pay, uh, play a second one. Well, first of all, a second one is three mana instead of one green mana. And, you know, playing a second protocol sorcerer also means that, you know, the Timmy will have summoning sickness, so you can't use it instantly. Whereas you play an instant energy on a Timmy that's already on the board, uh, it can ping for an extra damage straight away. So, you know, I think Instal Energy Protocol Sorcerer is still an, an interesting combo. It's not fantastic, but, you know, it can have its use. Uh, another thing that I noticed uh, at the end of this article is where he said, you know what, if you want to play competitive magic, uh, Protocol Sorcerer is probably not the way to go uh, because of cards that can destroy several 1-1 uh, creatures in one go, and then you have card disadvantage. I think he was talking about cards like Earthquake, Pestilence, um, and and he's right. It's, you know, smaller creatures are very vulnerable, and, and having a lot of creatures on the board in general uh, is dangerous in the uh, in today's old school scene. Still, 
but what I found even more interesting was his uh, suggestion. He said, you know what, I wouldn't play Protocol Sorcerer in a tournament scene. I would play Rod of Ruin instead. So I think that was really a cool mention there. A Rod of Ruin, a card I don't see often. I do see it in sideboards every here and there against Protocol Sorcerer decks, but also against cards like Preacher or Royal Assassin. So, you know, I do think, um, you know, Rod of Ruin can have its value. Then again, all the decks these days have a lot of artifact destruction and artifact hate. And, and maybe that makes Rod of Ruin an easier target to deal with than a Timmy. Maybe. Let me know what you think below of, of Rod of Ruin. Is it a card you would consider playing in your sideboard today in 2020 in your old school deck? Curious to hear from you. Well, this was it for now. This was it for another Duelist podca podcast. This was the second series. Uh, let me know if you would like to listen to a third one. And if so, if you have a preferred article for me to read to you. Um, if you want to support the channel, uh, leave a like, uh, subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet, share this video on your socials, that helps a lot. And of course, you can also become a Patreon of Timmy Talk, so you can support the channel financially as well. There's an info card appearing right now. You can click on it and you can check out the Patreon page. Maybe it's something for you. And talking about the Patreons, let's take a look at the end scroll. Let's take a look of the patrons of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Think it is somebody.